Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about electric charges and Coulomb's law. Now, getting started with electric charges, what exactly are they and how can we define them? So, atoms in this case um, are naturally found in neutral states because protons and electrons cancel out the charges. Now, what exactly does that mean? Electrons, which in this case are the outermost part of an atom, as well as protons and neutrons are the three main parts of an atom and they are what define the electric charge as well as the identity of an atom. Now, protons um, are positively charged. Each proton is a plus one and electrons are a minus one because they are negatively charged. So in this case, um, we have two protons as well as two electrons. And, well, two minus two equals zero, this being the protons and this being the electrons. And that results in a net charge of zero. Okay, so that means that the atom is of neutral charge or that it doesn't have either a positive or a negative charge. Now, let's be a little bit more specific and talk about static electricity. Static electricity occurs when an object obtains a either positive or negative charge, which creates an imbalance, and it makes the atom want to go back to being neutral. So what can be an example of this? Have you ever had a, a game where you, you rub a balloon on your hair and it kind of makes your hair rise a little bit with a balloon or the balloon can even stick to a wall? Now, the reason in which this happens is... Let me draw here a balloon and your hair. Okay, so when you rub and create that friction, that means that static electricity occurs and the objects contain either a positive or a negative, a charge because of a transfer of protons or electrons. So let's say here that the balloon becomes positively charged and your hair becomes negatively charged. That means that there is an imbalance in the net charge of this object, and it means that it wants to go back to being a neutral object. So that means that they are going to attract each other, and they are gonna to wanna to stick together, and a wall that has a combination of positive and negative, it's going to attract as well. Now, why is it that they attract? This is because, I don't know if you've heard before, opposites attract. So here we have an electron and a proton. And as I previously mentioned, opposites attract. So they're going to want to stick together and likes repel. So if we have here two electrons or two protons, these are going to want to be as far away as possible from each other because they don't like being together. So once again, opposites attract and likes repel. Okay, so once we've established that, we, we wanna be able to measure as well how strong they attract or how strong they repel. And that can be done precisely with Coulomb's law. Okay, so Coulomb's law is a formula made by Coulomb in which a constant multiplies the product of two charges, that being the positive or the negative, positive, positive, or negative, negative. And this is divided by the square root of the distance. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and write that formula down. So we have that the total force, which is how strong, um, this The E is just an electrostatic constant, which is a way to define this force just so we can identify it easier. So this is equal to K, which is a Coulomb's constant, which I'll get into a bit later. And this is multiplied by the magnitude of charge 1, which we're going to represent by Q1 
Q2, which is the magnitude of the second charge. And that is divided by the distance in between these charges squared. Okay, so once again, we're going to write down here one electron and one proton. Okay, now the distance in between here is R. And this is charge one. And this is charge two. Okay, so what's left now is for us to go ahead and um, let's do an example here and put a couple of values in, in this formula so that we can go ahead and and work out an example of this of this law okay so we have here that the total force fe and the constant which is coulomb's constant which is basically the area in which this charge or this attraction or repulsion is happening um, and it's a constant that depends on the area in which you are so the the standard for this that being either air or in a vacuum can be 9 times 10 to the 9 coulombs. Okay. Oh, I forgot the equal here. Okay. And now we just need to, to replace the, the charges. Okay. So, I don't know. Let's make up a random number. 7 times 10 to the negative 2 coulombs times um, negative 2 to the 10 to the negative 3, I'm sorry, coulombs. Okay. All right. Oh, my bad. Here, the units for coulombs constant is not coulombs, it is actually newtons times meter squared over coulomb squared. And we'll get into it just in a little bit why this makes sense, okay? And now all of this is going to be divided by one squared, okay? That's going to be the distance from each charge, all right? Now, what we need to do here is basically just solve so that we can get the, the net force, okay? So, I'm just going to rewrite the problem here. We have 9 times 10 to the 9th. I'm going to write the units. Newtons times meters squared over coulombs squared times 7 times 10 to the negative 2 coulombs times negative 2 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs over 1 meter all right and the one is is squared <clears throat> now to go ahead and solve this we can just multiply 9 9 times 7 times negative 2 all right and that's going to leave us with negative 126 and then the exponents we can just add them so that would be 9 minus 2 is 7 minus 3 that would be 4 so we have times 10 to the negative 4 and then 1 squared is just 1 so we're going to go ahead and write that down over here and Coulomb and Coulomb would be Coulomb squared, which means that this cancels with this. Let me go ahead and put that in another color. So this would cancel this. Meter squared would cancel with this. And that means that we're left with Newtons, which is exactly the unit that we want to have. Okay. Now this divided by 1 is just is negative 126 times 10 to the negative 4. And that's it. That would be our answer. Okay. So it would be negative 126 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons, all right? And what the negative sign also indicates is the direction, all right? So due to the fact that it's an electron and a proton, that means that they attract each other, 
So that's what the negative sign indicates. Now, if this were to be um, an electron and an electron or a proton and a proton, that would end up in a positive answer, and that would mean that they repel each other. So what this answer shows us is both the magnitude of the force as well as the direction in which it's traveling, okay? And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel to support, to support us. And also please leave a comment with any questions or feedback you might have as this helps me make better videos. Thank you for your time.